Uh, welcome everybody. Um, I hope it, I don't really like shouting, but I think I'll have to shout for the for the morning. So Rena is my name. Um, so I'm a I'm a chartered physiotherapist, um, and I, I suppose I've played a lot of camogie and ladies football down through the years. Um, so I've done an awful lot of warm ups. I haven't done an awful lot of talks on warm ups, and I haven't done an awful lot of coaching conferences before. But um, bear with me, and I hope that um, we'll all have uh, an enjoyable morning. So what we're going to go through, we'll we'll go through kind of warm-ups and kind of the, the theory behind warm-ups and what you're trying to achieve. I won't give you a set warm-up, but as long as you know what you're trying to achieve, then you'll be able to, you know, change it up. Nobody wants to do the same warm-up for the whole year, so change it up to as long as you're getting the key things in. Um, and just before that, we'll just go through. I've written down common injuries in the younger athlete. Now, they're not very common, but if young people do get injured, they're the common injuries that younger people get, that older people kind of get different injuries so kind of for adolescents they get kind of different types of injuries so we'll just go through them so you just have a, a little bit of an idea of if someone gets hurt or anything the kind of things to be looking out for um, and if you do have questions obviously we won't be hundreds of questions but do shout away if you don't understand something ask away the first one is kind of um, lower back injuries so there's two types of injuries that young people get in their, like adolescents get in their lower back and um, the first one is their desperate names Spondylosis. So, what a spondylosis is, it's a fracture in your, in your, um, in your, in one of the spinous, in the vertebrae, right? So, generally, it can occur kind of um, bit by bit, or it can occur all of a sudden, and it it, it would be, it would happen mostly in kind of gymnasts or anything with overhead, like tennis maybe or something like that. But definitely, you would come across. I've definitely come across camogie players and footballers who've reached up to catch a ball and have, have got a fracture in their back. So if someone is complaining of low back pain and it's sore when they go back, send them off for an x-ray. Um, the second one is you can get kind of between the age of nine and 14, so you can get a little bit of slipping in the, in the back as well between the two vertebrae. It's not common at all, but if people are complaining of, of pain in their lower back, definitely send them off, check it out, and it's an x-ray is what they'd be looking for. Not if, for young people, for backs, it's not an MRI scan, it's generally an x-ray is what they need. Then, I suppose, uh, again, these aren't very common, but they do happen. So there's, there's two ones for the hip. Um, so the, the first one, it's called, it's, it's a Sufi is what people generally refer to it as. So it can happen between, for people between the ages of 12 and 15. It generally happens to boys more than girls. And the type of person that it happens to is generally, if you're a little bit probably on the larger side, if you're a little bit overweight, that's the kind of person it happens to. The symptoms is that it's a limp with knee pain. So if any youngster is limping, be sure and get the, like youngsters don't really limp unless there's something wrong. So be sure and send them off and check it out. Um, and the second one is, is for a younger again, so four to 10 year olds, Perth day. So if someone is, has that, you definitely don't want them running on it. So again, it's a limp. So if a youngster is limping, send them off, check it out. Don't be taking any chances with, with limping. Youngsters don't limp. Then the next one is our ACL. So this is very popular in the media. So we all know a little bit about our ACL. So your ACL is your cruciate ligament injury. Um, so I, I think it can occur from about age 13 on. I've definitely seen from 13 year olds on. It's not a very common thing, but it's just something to have in the back of your head. Um, it usually occurs on a twisting movement with your knee falling inwards. Um, it can happen in a contact situation or a non-contact situation. So the player can have the ball and be hit, or the player might be just running after someone, they mightn't have the ball, or they might be making a run and they mightn't be anywhere near the ball. So it can be in, in any of those type of situations. Often the presentation is that the knee is very sore for about a minute, fear sore altogether, and then the pain kind of dissipates and settles down. And they think, often they think they're fine. Um, so that's, that's often, so that, that makes it tricky then for people on the line, will I put them back on, will I take them off, or what do you do? So like definitely if there's swelling, definitely take them off, but I suppose if they have any kind of sensation of giving way, then you kind of call it a day at that, definitely. Um, sometimes they hear a pop, sometimes they don't, and it's just something definitely to be aware of with girls, because it definitely happens more often with girls than with boys. So kind of turning in, giving way, a pop, swelling, off they come basically. Don't even, don't think about it. Um, and if, 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 that's what, if it's an MRI scan is what they need for, for that as well. The next thing then, which is a big thing for, for trainers and underage is, is growing pains, right? So um, what a growing pain is, is that when you grow, um, your skeleton grows first, so your bones grow first. So when you go to a growth sport, the grow, bones grow, and then there's a period that the muscles and the tendons haven't quite caught up. 
So the muscles are, or sorry, the bones are longer and the muscles in it and the tendons that attach onto the bones are on a bit of a stretch. So if you're asking those muscles and tendons to do an awful lot of work, if they're doing a, you know, an awful lot of matches and training, then those tendons can get sore. So the tendons are generally located around, the, around your joints, so at your ankles or your heel, around your knees or around your hips. So um, with the hips, it's generally pain at the front of the hip here. Um, it's usually an older, so 15 to 17, and it's more common in boys than girls because boys go through a bigger growth spurt at that, at that age. Um, so pain at the front of the hip, you would be, you'd be, de would, you, you know, you'd be thinking of, of growing pains. Um, in the knees, kind of between the age of 10 to 15, kind of 13 to 15 really is the, is the big one. And again, it's more likely boys than girls because boys go through a bigger growth spurt at that period. So if it's pain in the front of the knees without any big swelling or anything like that, you'd be thinking of growing pains. And the third one then is the heels. So the heels is big time more the girls than the boys. So it's between the ages of seven and 10, but definitely up to 12. But girls go through a bigger growth spurt at that period. So if girls are complaining of pain in their heels and they're, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, often it's, it's growing pains. So what do you do with growing pains? Like they just have to grow really, to be honest. And, and growing, it's, it's very hard to predict, like, you know, gr growth goes in fits and spurts. So you kind of need to let them go through that growth period and then it'll usually settle down after that. I would say the key thing is when they are going through that growth period and that they are, when they are quite sore, just leave them settle down, leave, her, leave them rest. And once that growth period kind of passes, they'll be fine again. They'll, they'll, there, won't be any, there won't be any long term implications with, with most of them. So that's kind of all the things to be watching out for. Don't worry, it's, I've written down common, but they're not very common at all. You won't see a whole point of them. But just so you know a little bit about them. So I suppose the main reason we're here is to, to do a little bit on on warm-up, so I suppose why do we warm up? Um, so there's two main reasons we do a warm-up. One is to prepare for performance and to perform as well as we can. And the second one is to, to reduce the injury rate among our, our teams and our athletes. What are, the key in, what are the injuries that we want to reduce? So there isn't a whole pile of study in terms of camogie injuries, but what, what, what there is there is there's the thighs, number one, so mainly the hamstring. So when we're doing the warm-up stuff in a minute, we'll be thinking of this, our hamstring. The second one is the knee. So the knee is obviously a big one for, for girls in particular. And then the third one is the lower leg, so like the calf and stuff. But I would say the hamstring and the knee would be the two big things. And there's much more study done in hurling and hurling would be the thigh, like the hamstring as well, the knee and the ankle. So they're the kind of key, th they're the reasons that people are generally out of camogie. So they're the kind of things you want to, to kind of avoid if possible, but definitely, definitely reduce. When we're doing our warm up, right? So there's a model that's probably, that's good. So it's called RAMP. So RAMP, RAMP stands for raise, activate, mobilize, and potentiate. Okay, it's a little bit gobbledygook now, but it's, it's grand when we, we break it down. So raise, so raise the body temperature. So raise the temperature, you want to raise it gradually, but you do want to get it up to, like, to, to top pace, basically, to, the, to match pace by the end of the warm up. Um, and you want to replicate the movements that are involved in, in the sport. So obviously with Komogi, it's, it's going to be twisting and turning. It's not just all straight. So definitely include some, some twisting and turning activity. Um, activate, so you need to activate the muscles that need to fire more efficiently or effectively. So the, the big one for that would be like your hamstrings, your hamstrings and your glutes. So th they're the muscles that probably aren't firing as effectively and efficiently as they could be. You know, and that'll be contributing to the reason why we get those injuries. So definitely the hamstrings will be good. Um, mobilize the joints that need to be mobile. So the joints that need to be mobile are your hip flexors, um, probably your back, like rotation in your back and your ankles. However, that would be more for the older athlete like myself, probably the younger athlete. That would be, that's not a priority at all. That would be your least of priorities. Like your activation stuff would be much more important than the, than the mobilize. If you're in charge of an older team and there's any 30 plus year olds, definitely send them mobilizing. Um, and then the last one is potentiate the nervous system. So that sounds kind of fancy, but basically all that is, is like make sure that you're hopping before the game. So like make sure your nervous system is ready to go. That you, don't, you know sometimes on the field people can be kind of lethargic and they're just not, not going. So like you want to make sure that you're doing kind of um, some sort of short high intensity thing at the end of the warm up. Give them a little break after that so you're not going out onto the pitch tired or anything like that. But you definitely want to do something at top pace, something fast, something to get your 
whole nervous system firing before you go out onto the field. Does that make sense? Okay, so I, I would say as well that um, ramp is lovely, it's a lovely word, but in terms of the order, I, I, I wouldn't stick with that order. So if I was doing a warm up, for me personally, I definitely start with the mobilize, and that would be kind of inside in the dress room before you go out into the field. Um, so if we have time at the end, we'll do that, but for young people, that's definitely not a priority. Like, young people are generally fine in terms of mobility. Um, raise, I'd, I'd probably go to that first. So that would be like your movements. Personally, if I was organizing a warm-up, what I'd be doing is I'd be mixing in the raise and the activation. So you do a little bit of, I'd probably have a ball and I'd probably be doing some, some like, you know, in twos or in trees. Uh, sorry, may, probably trees, I think trees is better. You know, you might do two minutes of just hand passing the ball, then you'd move on and do your first exercise. Two minutes of maybe striking the ball, on and doing your second exercise. Two minutes of striking the ball longer, on and doing your third exercise. Two minutes of, you know, running faster when you're, you know, striking the ball to hand. Next exercise. Then you might do your, um, like, dynamic movements. Next exercise. Then you do your potentiate ones, like your, your hopping, the ones in the last column there. And then you're kind of ready to go. So you've got your ball working. You've got all your activation stuff done. And then you <coughs> you've all your firing stuff done as well. So personally, if I'm doing a warm-up, I do like to mix it up between the, the running, which is the raise, the activation work, and then the potentiate at the end before you when you are warmed up and ready to go. So what we'll do this morning is probably we'll, we'll go through all the raise exercises first because obviously we don't have a field to be running around in. So we'll do those ones first. Then we'll do the activation exercises. Um, and then we'll do the potentiate ones at the end. Um, yeah, so that, that, and if we, sorry, and then if we have time at the very end, we'll do our mobilization work. All right, does that make sense? Okay, so um, on, the, on the floor here, we have four kind of, um, we have four squares. Yeah, we have 20. So uh, we'll, have, we'll, we'll go into the squares. So I just might show, I'll show you on this red square. So the first one we're gonna do, um, so we'll do the race, so we'll do our, we're gonna be running around in our, in our squares, right? So we're going to do forwards and backwards, and we're going to do a side step. So you're forward and back, so you're just, we're going to go around in the square. So obviously forward is simple enough. Then you're going to go side stepping. So when you're side stepping, try and get them have their feet in parallel. You see loads of people, and they'll be turned this way. But when you're doing your side stepping, try and get them have their feet in parallel, so that they're side stepping along here, backing back, and you're side stepping along again. So far in the back is obviously easy, but the side step we're going to go feet in parallel. We might get people up and we'll just do the, those ones first to make sure we're comfortable with them. And then we'll do our shuffle and it's a karaoke just after that then. So I'll get everybody to stand up. So off we go there. So, so I'm running forward. Yeah, off, follow, just follow on, follow on, follow on. So side stepping across. So remember your feet in parallel. So careful, your feet in parallel, feet in parallel, feet in parallel when you're going across. That's it, feet in parallel when you're going across. Very good. Feet in parallel, watch your feet. Feet in parallel. Feet in parallel. Good. The second two then are probably, very, I think the shuffle is fierce important, right? So it's just to get, it's, it's a little bit tricky on your feet at the start, but it's very, very important. It's very important for defenders in particular, right? And I love defending, right? So the shuffle, and then the second one is the karaoke. So what a shuffle is, is you're taking two steps to either side, and I definitely would like to have your hands up as well. So I don't like Komogi players dragging their hurlies, hands up, like you need to have your hands up all the time. So your, su your shuffle would be two steps to the right, two steps to the left. And you want to do the same, so you'd have your hurley up, and you want to have the same back as well. So it's really good movement for defenders, okay? I'll do it once more for you. So two steps left, two steps right, and you want to hands up and looking forwards. All right, so what we'll do is you're going to shuffle going forward, side step going across, shuffle going back, side step going across, and the hands are up, all right? So we can get into the, so it's two right and two left. All right, off we go there, so. Good, two right and two left, two right and two left, hands up. So remember, feet in parallel when you're going across, 
and two right and two left. Good. Sorry. Two right and two left and feet in parallel going across. Good. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Sorry, the square is tiny. Good. Hands up. That's it. Hands up. Two right and two left. So, so our shuffle. And then this, this one is great crack now, right? So it's, it's very good for your, for your hips and like for youngsters, getting them to move like is, is fierce important. So this is called, it's a karaoke. It's a grapevine. And I'm sure everyone's done it on a night out basically, right? So I was, trying to, I was trying to figure this out this morning, how to explain it. So you're going forward, back, back, forward, forward, back, back, forward. Forward, back, back, forward. Okay, when you're doing it quickly, it'll, it'll come to you. All right, so you're going. Very good for feet, getting your feet right. So feet is very important for all youngsters. Even if they're not fast, if their feet are good, they're in with a great chance. So feet is very important for youngsters. Forward, back, back, forward. Forward, back, back, forward. Forward, back, back, forward. So we're going to have great crack now, right? So what we're going to do in the squares, you're going to shuffle forward. You're going to go across, and then you're going to shuffle back with your hands up. All right? So you're getting your feet, um, you're getting control of your feet and quick feet, and then you're getting a rotation through your back and your hips as well. So ideally, it would be like this. Okay? We might do, so we'll do three rounds again. So you're going to shuffle forward, two steps forward, two st or two steps sideways, two steps sideways. And then it's forward, back, back, forward. Forward, back, back, forward. All right, so we'll do, try and do three rounds nice and slow. Just try and get the pattern of movement correct. All right, off we go there. So, so that's it. Lovely. Good, very good, very good. So that's it, forward, back, back, forward, forward, back, back, excellent. Very good, very good. Excellent, well done. Super. So this is what we're trying to achieve, this one. La. Okay, so we'll try just going down, just take your time and off we go, yeah. Good, so you're trying to get good feet, good feet, that's it. Very good. Good, very good. And back up again, back up again, just practice away, good. Very good. Lovely, down we go again, back down again, it's better, yeah, well done. Excellent, good. Lovely, and back up again, super. Excellent. They're kind of all the movements, and then just general moving, running around, poking the ball. You know, obviously that's very important. That it's not just all straight drills because in matches the ball doesn't come straight to you all the time. So try and just in twos and threes, running around, poking the ball, so it's coming at different angles. All right. Okay. So then the next ones are the are the um, we'll do the activation ones. So an RDL or squat or lunge, and basically the, if we get the first one right and the second one, we'll be flying right. So an RDL. Um, it's, for, it's basically for your backside and for your hamstring, right? Um, so when you're doing an RDL, let's say I'm doing it on my left leg, right? So you're standing on your left leg, you'd have a small bend on your left knee, and then you don't bend the knee anymore, right? So what you're doing is you're reaching forward with your arms and reaching back with your leg. Oh, it's hard on the balance though. So you should get a big stretch up the back of your standing leg, and you come back up to standing. Biggest mistake people, there are people make two mistakes with it really, right? The first one is that they bend their knee and turn it into a squat. It's your hip is what you're putting the pressure on, not your knee. A squat or a lunge is where you're putting it on your knees. This is your hip, right? So you do have a small bend in your knee, that's to take the pressure off the nerves and stuff. But then the rest of the movement comes from your hip. And the second thing is you want your back to be flat, okay? So you don't want to twist your back. So you want to make sure that you're going flat down and that you're not up this way. 
So your free hip, so in this case my right hip, so your right hip should be close to the floor. It's not twisted away, it's down. And when you do it yourself in a second, you'll know that when your hip is down, you'll get a much bigger pull on your hamstring. Okay, so what you're looking for is a stretch on your hamstring. So you go kind of slow on the way down, and then you come back up. So slow on the way down, and when you're in this position, you try and be in a long straight line between your, your knee, your hip, and your shoulder, and you come back up. Okay, so it is tricky on the balance. So, like if you're getting into this, if you're doing this with youngsters, trying to come out a second there, so you, you do it in twos, like so. I'd be this way, so we do the exercise together so that, that you're two of us are together. So balance, like, your balance gets better as you get older. So for a 12-year-old, the balance would be much harder. And the more you practice balance, the better you get at it. So we might try it. We'll try it um, in ones, I suppose, first. So remember, the key things is keep your back flat. There's a small bend in your knee, but not much of a bend in your knee. The rest of the bend comes from your, from your hip. All right, so we'll start away. So reaching forward, the other leg goes back. So you're looking for a big stretch on the back of the standing leg, and we come back up to standing. It's very good, perfect. Off we go again. So hand, try and bring the hands. Good, that's not bad at all. That's very good. And when would you switch over? How, how many would you do? So like for, for that, I've, I've written down eight above. No, that's a single leg, so six or eight. Like. If they get the movement correct, that's great, but the balance is hard with this. The balance makes it a hard exercise. Great there, sorry, I'll just see if anyone. That's very good. Very good. Because you need to reach more, reach more with that, with the other leg. So try it on your two legs there as well. Good. Excellent, perfect. So that's your first one, that's your RDL. So your second one is your squat, right? So for your squat, there's three things. First is your foot placement, right? So you should have your feet kind of in underneath your hips. People love to have these big wide feet, right? Try not to have them too wide in underneath your feet or underneath your hips, sorry. Second thing is don't have them turned out. People love turning out. You can have them turned out slightly, but like no, no clone stuff, right? In, par in parallel probably is the best thing, right? So feet position, that's the first thing. And then the other two are your knees, right? So one, don't leave your knees fall in. Your knees stay over your feet. So if you're looking at someone straight on, when you're squatting, the knees shouldn't fall in. They, they should stay out over, don't let them fall in, out over your feet.